The transponder is a critical avionics component that allows your aircraft to communicate its position with air traffic control and can enhance situational awareness through ADS-B technology. Skyview HDX integrates the transponder seamlessly, providing pilots with an intuitive interface along with many modern features. Dynon offers two transponders that can be connected to the Skyview through one of the five serial ports available in the system. Both of these transponders look almost identical except for the label designating the model number. When installed and configured properly, the Skyview HDX system gains an integrated transponder that is controlled directly from the Skyview display. The SVXBNDR-262 is a lower power Class II Mode S transponder that is limited to use beneath 15,000 feet and under 175 knots. The SVXBNDR-261 is a higher power Class I Mode S transponder that can be used above those limitations. In the U.S., the FAA 2020 ADS-B out regulations require the more powerful Class I transponder and therefore the 261 model is required for both experimental and certified aircraft that intend to fly in the ADS-B rule airspace within the U.S. For aircraft outside the U.S., the lower power 262 model may be sufficient for lower speed and lower altitude aircraft in the airspace in which they operate in. Additionally, for ADS-B out compliance, the transponder must be receiving GPS position from a high integrity GPS position source, like that provided by the Dynon SV GPS 2020 unit, or possibly other compatible IFR GPS navigators. See the Skyview System Installation Guide for more information about ADS-B out compatibility. Topics covered in this video apply to both transponder models as they are completely identical in operation. When the transponder is installed and configured properly, the top status bar will display the transponder's status information. Within this status bar, you will see information such as the squawk code. Next to that, the current transponder mode, and finally, the reply status icon. Changing the state of the transponder is accomplished by entering the transponder main menu. Entering this can be accomplished two ways, either by simply touching the transponder status window located in the top status bar, or by selecting the menu button from the bottom main menu and then selecting transponder. Once in the transponder menu, the pilot can adjust the squawk code as required. This is accomplished by simply typing the four digit code you wish to enter. Squawk codes can be entered no matter what mode the transponder is in. More on modes in just a bit. If you find that while entering the squawk code you accidentally enter the wrong number, you can backspace by selecting the backspace soft key or continue entering the numbers until the positions are filled and then start over again. For convenience, a quick VFR squawk code button is provided, which will instantly set the transponder to the VFR squawk code you have configured within the system. The default VFR code is 1200, the US VFR code, but this can be changed during setup for VFR squawk codes in other countries. If the transponder page is closed while an incomplete code value is entered, the incomplete code is disregarded and the transponder will continue transmitting with the last valid code entered. Let's talk a bit about the transponder modes that are available. Once again, it is worth mentioning here that like almost any menu selection, available transponder modes are selectable either through a touch or knob action. Located in the lower right corner of the transponder page is the ALT or altitude button. Selecting ALT mode within the transponder menu will configure the transponder to the most common operational mode. In this mode, the transponder will respond to all interrogations with the required information including pressure altitude and GPS information for ADS-B out. The preferred mode of operation within the HDX system for the transponder is the auto mode. In auto, HDX automatically determines the flight condition of the aircraft using a combination of GPS information and indicated airspeed. With this information, HDX commands the transponder to set a mode that gives the appropriate replies in all cases. Less commonly, the auto mode can also be configured to utilize an aircraft mounted squat switch. Pilots should be aware of what system is installed in the aircraft they are operating and familiarize themselves with its operation. 
If your system shows GND or ground in this location, the auto mode has not been configured for your system. However, in modern, normal operations, ground mode is typically not used unless directed by ATC. Again, Dynon highly recommends the use of the transponder auto mode for most aircraft flight operations. Authorized personnel can refer to the Dynon system installation guide on how to properly configure the transponder in the HDX system. In the bottom left corner of the transponder menu window, we have the standby mode, denoted by SBY. When in standby mode, the transponder is receiving power, but it will not reply to any interrogations or broadcast ADSB out information. It is essentially waiting to be activated. This is the mode that the transponder is in when no other modes are active. It is as close to turning the transponder off as possible without actually cutting power to the unit. If asked by ATC or other controlling authorities to disable your transponder, putting it in standby mode will accomplish this. For numerous reasons, turning the power off to the transponder should always be avoided unless circumstances require it. Note that when the standby mode is selected, not only does the top status bar change to indicate SBY for standby, but the color of the characters have now changed to yellow signifying that the transponder is not actively broadcasting. Within the transponder menu itself, a yellow indication is shown on top of the soft key button, indicating the standby mode is currently active. This is unique for the standby mode, as all other modes will have a green indication when active. Selecting the On button within the transponder page menu will configure the transponder to respond to all interrogations, but without altitude reporting. In most parts of the world, if you have altitude reporting capability, then by law you must report altitude. Therefore, only use the on mode when directed by ATC. As with all of the transponder modes, the top status bar will be updated, showing the transponder is now in the on mode, and will remain green because the transponder is broadcasting, but broadcasting without altitude information. As previously mentioned, in general, pilots should always use ALT or auto mode when on the ground and in flight, unless directed by ATC or if local laws say otherwise. All pilots should be familiar with the IDENT mode, as it has existed on almost every transponder for several years. In Skyview HDX, the IDENT mode is activated by using the IDENT soft key button located on the transponder menu page. Additionally, Dynon provides a separate remote IDENT button that can be connected and configured directly to the Skyview HDX system. Authorized installers should refer to the HDX system installation guide for specifics. Activating the IDENT mode, usually when directed by ATC, will cause the transponder status bar to display IDT and command the transponder to transmit the required IDENT signal. After a period of time, the transponder will automatically revert back to its normal state and normal operation will continue. Finally, we have the transponder reply status indication, which is located within the transponder status window. This indication icon illuminates when the transponder replies to interrogations, then fades out in a way that pays tribute to the transponders of earlier times. I guess Dynon software engineers were a bit nostalgic when designing this. You might just find this quite charming and comforting. Thanks for watching this Skyview HDX Academy video. Be sure to visit the Dynon YouTube channel and look for more Academy videos under the HDX Academy playlist.